Britain's emergency bikers are on the front line, racing to protect the public and save lives. And they've never been more crucial. With 33 million vehicles on UK roads, the country's congested cities and major routes are the busiest in Europe. The bike squads of Essex Police and West Midlands Ambulance Service provide help where it's most needed, fast. No reason you can have a lock knife. Straightforward offence. How many bangs did you hear? On emergency bikers, there's a call to a suspected stabbing. You don't know what that blade has touched as it's been going into the body. Merseyside Fire and Rescue unveiled the UK's first firefighting bike. And biker cop PC Mick Wills goes stateside. That feels quite cool, really. I might go for a cruise. Birmingham. And the biker paramedics are standing by. Topic of conversation the wishes of Steve Harris's partner, Barbara. And she wants a new bedroom carpet, and I've just had to buy a new gearbox. Just go and buy two carpet tiles. Strap them to her. Put some straps on them so she can <laughs> slip them in. She's walking like this with carpet tiles. You think she's got some new carpet tiles? Every room. Every room. Every room. Yeah, carpet. Carpet. New carpet. New carpet. <laughs> but when a call comes in, they're poised for action. On the Yamaha FJR 1300's top speed 130, they race to emergencies within an eight-mile radius of the city centre. Carrying everything a traditional ambulance has, they're trained to deal with anything. All right, just relax, just relax. It's a chemical incident. We've got six casualties. This is obviously now classed as a major incident. And to capture the action, we put special cameras on each rider and bike so we arrive at the scene the second they do. On call, Steve Harris. Got a stab in the neck. Last year in the UK, there were more than 33,000 knife and sharp weapon offences, 4,000 of them in the West Midlands. It takes Steve just three minutes to cross this city, not stopping for anything, including red lights. He needs quickly to assess the man's wounds, but getting to the bottom of the incident is going to be tricky. The man's wife is distraught and the couple don't speak English. But Steve knows only too well that stab wounds can cause injuries that aren't always immediately obvious. The, the problem is you don't know, because the, the knife tends to go in and then come back out again, They're rarely left in place. You don't know what that uh, blade has touched as it's been going into the body. Keep, keep still. It could have nicked any number of blood vessels uh, which could be bleeding. It can nick nerves. It can cause all sorts of problems. We do see an awful lot of knife wounds. We're in the, uh, the borders between Lazelles and Hansworth. And yes, we, we do get this type of case around here. It looks like the wound's minor, but it's only when a French-speaking ambulance officer arrives that the real story emerges. The man's been assaulted by a stranger, but not with a knife. Although upset and shaken, the man's not seriously injured but he'll need to be checked in hospital. The job as we received it, where someone had been stabbed in the neck, uh, a slight exaggeration, and so you get a, quite a, a very minor wound just in the side of the head, so uh, no cause for concern. That might be the case on this occasion, but fellow paramedic Mark Hayes remembers only too well the time he had to take drastic action. So I'd literally turned into the street and then I was updated that there was a stabbing. 
had to take a, a, a bit of a double take. Um, I actually saw a, a jet of blood coming out the side of his neck, a spur to blood, an arterial bleed. I've had previous arterial bleeds where you see a, a pulsating spurt uh, from a wound. This just appeared to be one constant spurt out the side of the neck. Absolutely nothing I'd seen before. No amount of bandages or compression were working. If we didn't do something quickly, he was going to die in front of us. It was suggested by a colleague maybe inserting a finger to try and stem the bleed. Um, so it, it's not the done thing, however. Um, I did, I inserted my finger into the hole that was in the neck and uh, it, it, it stopped the bleed. There was no other option, he was bleeding out, so it was literally get the finger straight into the hole and it, and it remained there until we got to hospital and surgeons took over. After the break, there's only one way down the stairs. That's all right, we've got him. Ah! And the UK's very first firefighting bike. A warm bike can actually put out a car fire and they will actually put out a, a, a wagon fire. Birmingham, 10 a.m., and there's a call to a hairdresser with a suspected broken leg. Paramedic biker Steve Harris is just metres away and is on scene in seconds. 37-year-old stylist Paul was up a ladder changing a light bulb when he fell. Right, I can see the obvious swelling, and the, it, I presume that's where the pain is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You were on this ladder here? Yeah. A few steps up, or what? Yeah. Can you move your toes? Hmm? It's just the pain. It looks like he may have broken his tibia and fibula, the bones in the lower leg that bear all the body weight. Not good news for a hairdresser who's on his feet all day. He needs more feet. One of the very best uh, pain relief drugs. He's one of nearly 1,200 people seriously injured in Ladder Falls every year, which also claim one life every month. At the moment, we can give him up to 10 milligrams. Uh, although I'm going to try him with five milligram first before we start thinking of moving his leg. An ambulance crew arrives. How are you feeling? Well, I'm just a bit fed up. Fed up. <laughs> okay. I, can't, I haven't come forward to be off. Uh, I, can so, I, I can see you're not impressed. But whatever's happened has happened. So, you know, you can't alter that now. It may be that when you get to hospital, get the x-rays. It may not be as bad as you... Uh, of thinking. The big challenge now is getting him down the stairs. The morphine's working, but Paul's leg must be stabilised before he can be moved. Just popped a splint on. Most people call them blow-up splints. Uh, they're actually vacuum splints. There's a, a bag full of polystyrene beads. What we're going to do now is take the air out of that bag, which forms, makes the beads form a rigid structure. And that's going to help support his leg while we get down the stairs. One, two, three. Okay. It's right beyond you. You're okay, Paul. Trust me. So far, so good. But now there's a corner to negotiate without so much as a bump to Paul's leg. Okay. Nearly three minutes later, he's safely in the ambulance. Pain score? We're going to transport Paul to City Hospital, uh, get them to have a look at his leg. Uh, he's going to need x-rays. In all likelihood, I think it is broken. It seems like it'll be a while before Paul is back in the cell. <laughs> Liverpool and Merseyside Fire and Rescue are poised to unveil their latest weapon, the first in the UK, a firefighting motorbike. The BMW R1200RT, the same model used by Essex biker cops, has been specially adapted to fight small fires. The curse of the 249 square miles covered by Merseyside. They account for one in six calls and are believed to cost the Patches taxpayers more than one million pounds a year. Enough to pay for 55,000 fire bikes. This UK first is the brainchild of district manager John McCormack. To send the big red fire appliance with four people on it, with all the life-saving equipment on it, to a small, what was basically a small bin fire or a small rubbish fire, does not make sense. Economically, it doesn't make sense. 
And as far as the environment can extends, you know, it doesn't make sense for that. When you put a, a large fire engine on the road, you, with blue, blue lights, you increase the road risk to other users. Like any major conurbation, Merseyside struggles with congestion. Now a bike is nimble, it's quick, they'll be able to get there quickly and safely to deal with any incidents. Selected to trial the bike for six months, Chris Bowers. You can get through um, heavy traffic much quicker and much easier than an 18-ton fire engine will. It's taken three years to perfect the two bikes. Each carries two 25-litre tanks of pre-mixed foam and water and 30 metres of hose. So with the extra weight, it's going to take some precision handling. Riding alongside Chris, Colin Golden. It is a bigger bike to, to actually ride, but it's just like riding a bike with a pillion and uh, full luggage, basically. Top speed is likely to be around 70, but they'll be able to weave through traffic faster than a traditional fire engine, and the big trucks are freed up for major incidents. Well, obviously, you are more vulnerable than an 18-ton fire engine, but we're trained to the highest level, police uh, standard response level, and you just got to look out for yourself. Uh, people do tend to get out of the way when they see a big red bike and their blue lights and sirens. Small fires might seem like small fry, but as Chris knows, they shouldn't be underestimated. You've only got to look at some of the areas where a wheelie bins are actually kept by people's front doors. So if you, if you get just a, a simple wheelie bin fire, it could develop from the outside, certainly going through the, uh, and then become a house fire very, very quickly. Kids deliberately pushing bins up against houses has become an epidemic. Within five minutes, toxic gases are released and it generates the same searing heat as a car fire. And these arson attacks have claimed lives. The fire bikes will be on scene in minutes. Droplets of water rapidly douse the fire, stopping oxygen from fanning the flames. The fire bikes will be critical on the front line and it's taken years to finesse them. Lever arms on the brakes and gears have been extended for the large toe caps a firefighter must wear. Helmets are being specially designed to suit both riding and firefighting, and there are the uniforms to develop. Something that works for riding, but is also protective and fire resistant. If you're wearing this for, you know, six, seven hour period during the day, then uh, it's our comfort wear, basically. The bikes will come into their own with the most common form of arson, car fires. For vehicle fires on uh, motorways, for instance, or dual carriageways, uh, where there's traffic backed up due to the incident, uh, these bikes can obviously get through traffic a lot quicker, uh, even using the hard shoulder. Every week in the UK, 1,400 cars are destroyed or damaged at a cost of £77 million, enough to build a couple of new fire stations. It takes just three minutes for this car to belch toxic smoke, but it doesn't take much longer for the fire bike to put it out. The secret weapon is a specially developed lance, which can smash through windows and headlights. A blanket of foam ensures there is no chance of reignition. Uh, one bike can actually put out a car fire, and they will actually um, put out a, a, a wagon fire. They're a huge asset for uh, Merseyside Fire Service. Birmingham. And if Steve had a struggle getting a patient down the stairs, there's a major challenge facing fellow biker paramedic Mark Hayes. A man is reported to have fallen off a drain pipe at least 20 feet off the ground. Mark races across town, covering three miles in just under six minutes. He's first on scene. The man is at the top of the second staircase. What's happened? What's happened? Just, I don't know, I was just pin here, pin here. Right, oh, you've had a fall, is that right? Have you got pain in your neck or your back at all? Back. Maybe I broke my, this one and this one, I don't know. With possible broken ribs and back pain, this is going to take some handling. Obviously the potential's there for all sorts of injuries from head, spinal, to internal. Um, obviously it's really important that we, we immobilise him now, get him off to hospital, 
um, and, and, and just uh, treat as we find. Any unnecessary movement could result in paralysis. Keep still, keep still. So we are, mate. Keep still. The man must be kept as still keep as possible. Still. Stop moving. This is very uncomfortable, but it's, it's really important that we pop this on you and that you keep your head still, all right? A collar will immobilise his neck. OK. OK. Yeah, I've got the head if you want to wrap that around. OK. You need to keep still now, yeah? This is the hard bit. Deep breath in. The only way to safely move him okay. is on a scoop stretcher, literally scoop him up. In. But it's going to take some doing. I think if we just, um, underneath here, shuffling down a step. Keep still, no, 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 you need to keep still. Yeah, yeah. We're just going to roll you to one side, all right? Bring your hand across. You need to keep still, yeah? Yeah, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Ah! Ah! Oh, oh, hold on. Uh -huh. Come on, we've, we've got it, we've got it. There you go. No one could afford to make a wrong move. Right. Just foot on the bottom. Foot's on the bottom. Okay. <laughs> All right, keep still, You're keep still, keep fell. still. <laughs> no swearing. Ah. Okay. You got that, Steve? Yes. Right, so hang on. We'll just drag him over. <laughs> right. Lifting on three, Steve. All right. Yep. He says, one, two, three. And now there's a narrow corner to get round. Um, yeah. Slowly, slowly. Okay. One. Two, right. Slow leg. It's taken 10 painful, exhausting minutes to move the man down the stairs, but they're finally out the door. Slimmest one first. Two steps. One and two. Big, big lad. <laughs> big, big lad. Wow. Yeah, good. That was a trying your school job. <laughs> huh? Oh. To try and immobilise, he's a big chap. Over six foot tall. Muscular like myself. And uh, it was just, um, yeah, it was a nightmare. It was so warm and, and then trying to uh, immobilise him. Um, no, it wasn't the best of jobs. Moving an immobile patient is hard work at the best of times, but for the bikers, it's even more difficult, especially in a summer heat wave where temperatures reach 25 degrees. Obviously, you've got all the uh, protective gear on, jackets, leathers, etc. You've got the external temperatures, you've got the heat coming up off the bike. Um, and once you get to the job, you don't have time to, oh, I'll take my jacket off, I can get a bit of fresh air whilst I'm treating the patient. You know, you've got to get there and you've got to start work whatever it may be, straight away. Um, so it, it really physically exhausts you. I mean, by, by the end of the day, you're absolutely shattered. And then if it's a busy day, you go from job to job to job. Um, you don't always have chance to have the fluid intake that you need. And um, it really does tell on you. After the break, a driver goes on the charm offensive. Did they pick you especially for this today? That's not really. Being an attractive woman as you are. That's not going to help you, I'm afraid. You Never does. I mean, I'll congratulate you on... And Steve's not happy. Because I don't think this is appropriate use of the uh, 999 emergency service. Essex, South End on Sea. A resort famous for its pier and home turf for new biker cop recruit PC Lucy Watson.
Lucy's on patrol in town. Perched high on her bike, she spots a white van. The driver's clearly not wearing a seatbelt. She's on his tail. She waits until he turns into a side street to pull him over safely. Straight away, the driver's on the charm offensive. Did they pick you specially for this today? Sorry? Did they pick you specially for this today? Pick me specially. <laughs> no, really. Being an attractive woman as you are. That's not going to help you, I'm afraid. You never know. does. What's wrong? <laughs> Come out the road for me, sir. What have I done? It's not what you haven't done. Okay, All right. you just passed me, you're not wearing your seatbelt. Okay, yeah. obviously because of that I'm going to report you for that offence and I'm going to caution you, you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Right. Do you have a medical exemption certificate? No. Okay, does your seatbelt work? Yes. Okay, any reason why you weren't wearing it? Uh, just got back into the van and slipped my mind at the time. Okay, so today you are going to get a ticket I'm afraid. It's a £60 fine, but you don't get any points on your licence. Happy days. Do you have your licence with you, sir? No. Do you have any identification with you? Um, maybe. Okay. Maybe. Lucy's come across charmers before, but not all are as persistent as this man. And what is your date of birth, please, sir? 17, 6, 56. That makes me about 21, 22. A bit like me, I'm really. <laughs> Just a fraction older than me. You look 21, 22, <laughs> don't you? That won't get you off, I'm afraid. <laughs> You'll get extra money for handcuffs. You have to be really bad before I get them out. I could be. Right. As I said, £60 fine. You don't get any points on your licence. Okay. Do you understand all of that? Oh, yeah. Most importantly, please put your seatbelt on every time you get in. Can you have a safe journey, please? I certainly will. Thank you. With my seatbelt on. With your seatbelt on, yes. Right. Bye bye. See ya. Doesn't get much more simple than that. People aren't always as happy as about it as that, but um, yeah. A cheeky smile and patter might brighten the day, but it'll never mean a let off from Lucy. Birmingham. On call, Steve Harris. Call sign, Forrest. Forrest Grove. There's this misconception that sometimes I can be a bit prickly, a bit grumpy. Uh, I don't see it myself, I, as far as I'm, I'm all sweetness and light, but other people seem to get this impression about me. So, why does Barbara wear a t-shirt that says I'm with grumpy? <laughs> Answer that. And why have you got a t-shirt on saying grumpy? The t-shirt with... <laughs> yeah, the, she also sent a text around all her friends. And uh, the text was, um, I always dreamed of marrying somebody from a fairy story. Little did I dream that it would be grumpy out of Snow White. <laughs> 201, Rogers, details received on Grumpy or not, Steve is soon on his way to an incident. Quicker than an ambulance, he zips across the city, going through areas a truck can't go, including pedestrian precincts. He's first on scene in under a minute to find a familiar face. We meet again. Are you addicted to finding for ambulances? Spinal pain. I know you've always got spinal pains. How many times this I've met you? It's the third time he's been called to this man in a week, and he's not amused. Well, I'm waiting for the, the scan. Yeah, when you went to hospital last time, what did they do for you? Um, do they do anything? Do they treat you, or do they send you home? Well, they sent me home, but I they sent board. you home. Right. It's gone into a spasm. Mm-hmm. Do you want to come and sit over here on the bench? Go on. Then. So as we say, I know you've had three ambulances out. We keep taking you to hospital, they're not doing anything for you. Presumably because there's nothing they can do. What painkillers have you taken? Mm-hmm. 
into a spasm. We'll wait for the ambulance. We'll pop it around the hospital again. Get them to have another look at you. I'm just wondering how many times we've got to do this. Well, you're the one that keeps phoning. He lives in one of the local hostels. He walks out of the hostel, comes into the city, uh, goes to a telephone box and then telephones with back pain. Uh, we take him to uh, our local hospital, City Casualty. They check him out, look him over, discharge him, send him home. Um, and a few days later, he'll do exactly the same thing. Uh, the only difference today is he's picked a different telephone box. I did have a go at him uh, the other day. Uh, I'd had him at the same phone box uh, within a couple of days. Uh, and I just asked him how come he man always managed to reach that one. Well, today he's come to a different one, uh, but it's exactly the same uh, call. You had your ibuprofen today? You had any alcohol? Well, I've been to the doctor and she told me to have some tablets to make it go into spasm again, so... So hang on, since half one you've already seen the doctor. So why phone for an ambulance? Because he wouldn't. Well, if you've already seen a doctor, what's the hospital doctor going to do any different? Because I don't think this is appropriate use of... Uh, 999 emergency service. But whatever Steve's suspicions, a back complaint needs checking. <laughs> 212, just checking ambulance on route over. Should we pop it on the ambulance? Just take your time. Oh, well, we'll pick that up. You just get yourself on the ambulance. We're going to take a uh, gentleman back into uh, local hospital. They'll have another look, yet another look at him, and uh, I'm assuming they'll just discharge him back to the hostel. But so we can't leave him on the street. He'll phone again, so we have to take him somewhere. It might seem tough, but Steve's got 27 years' experience on his side. Some people, some patients, will only tell you what they want to tell you, and some patients tend to exaggerate uh, on symptoms and exaggerate on uh, what's actually happening to them. Uh, over the years you, t you tend to discover a sixth sense as you, you can see through a lot of what the patient's telling you and you don't necessarily believe or accept uh, everything that they say. But practical joker Mark has just a thing to sweeten forest. The most sour sweets you've ever experience. Brought tears to my eyes, they're disgusting. Steve doesn't know that, so we're about to give him one. Have to have the odd sweetie, don't you? Gotta keep this figure up somehow. Cracking oldy worldy little sweet shop. What your sweet, mate? Try one of them. Oh, Absolutely. Awesome. Dark ones are apple. The pinky one's cherry. Hello, oh, enough. Gorgeous, mate. They're a bit sour. They're a bit sour. Oh! <laughs> but the reckon as you get older, your taste buds wear away, so that's going to be reassuring to you then. But I can still yeah. taste it. Mm. Essex, and the biker cops are ready for another day on patrol. Their powerful BMW R1200RTs, which accelerate from 0 to 60 in under four seconds, act as their offices eight hours a day. There's no room for error. PC, Ray Jeffrey. Motorcyclists are exposed to danger. You're conscious that your legs are, are exposed to anything that might be sticking out from the vehicle, such as bumpers, some of these vans that carry glazing, for example, that have the framework on the sides. Uh, the large goods vehicles with the, the underriders and the metal work down the side is, it can quite easily catch up, not only on your legs, but on the uh, crash bars and the siren and bits and pieces on the side of the bike. It's difficult sometimes, for example, when you're on an emergency call and you've been travelling at a fair pace over a fair distance. You're perhaps thinking about the incident and what's going to be happening when you get in there, rather than concentrating on what you're doing at that moment, which is riding a bike at high speed and sometimes you just have to take a step back and think, oh, hang on, um, what's going on now? The biker cops are highly trained, but if riding's risky for them, it's more so for others, with motorcyclists 30 times more likely to die than motorists. 
Great Bentley, in the northeast of the county, is home to the largest village green in Britain and hosts to rallies for as many as a thousand bikes a week. On duty, PC Mick Wills. It's a chance for the biker cops to hang out with the biking community. And it's a job Mick just loves. I come here off duty sometimes, my son comes on the back and uh, we come down here and we do, do sort of, not for long, just sort of join in, you know. Common interest, everyone's friendly, you know, even to the old Bill. Do you remember me? Nuremberg ring last year. Oh, with with Kobe. Oh, that's right, yeah. Is it all right? Yeah, good, yeah. What were you racing when you, when you raced? What were you racing for? Uh, last bike I raced was a Kawasaki 750, which is a bike, you know, like in uh, endurance, 24 hour stuff. And just out of interest, how's that fire blade compared with oh, that power faster. wiser? Is it's it really? Faster, yeah. But with 250 bikers killed and injured in Essex last year, there's a serious message for Mick to spread. In the past, before we had motorcycles in Essex, uh, or in the period when we didn't have them, there was a lot of problems with people misbehaving. We had some quite nasty accidents, all of which were people, as far as I'm aware, showboating, you know, uh, wheeling, uh, stuff like this. And we had some, we had some fatalities. We've had some nasty ones recently as well, with people leaving this event. So we try and, um, you know, fly the flag and, um, we also try and promote safer riding with our bike safe initiative. And there's nothing to beat the like-minded talking to the like-minded. We have a feeling that they're more open with us as bikers, as, even though we're police bikers, than they would be to, you know, a squad car or, or uh, um, someone on foot, you know. And the younger the rider, the better. Actually, motorbikes are faster than cars. Actually, I think you're right. And with all the bikes on show, even an old hand like Mick might learn a thing or two. What, what on earth is that? Is that a bass speaker? I've never seen that before. What's this then? Is that like a power amp or something? Where do you put your music? Just a, oh, you're on your phone. Wow. What's it sound like when you put the seat down? Oh, it comes on here. Oh, it was a uh, Yamaha's uh, like little pit stop boy. Is that, was that music? <laughs> Just across the road, there's something more up Mick Street. Half the boxes in America use these, and the other half use Harleys. I'm going to take a picture of this, but I'm getting my camera for <laughs> Excellent. Got a bed. That feels quite cool, really. I might go for a cruise. Birmingham. The biker paramedics never know what they will be called to and have to be ready to deal with anything. On duty, Barry Rudge. It takes him 40 seconds to cover just over a mile to help a woman who's got asthma. And to get as close as he can, he rides straight up the path. One in 12 people suffer from asthma in the UK. What's happening today, darling? It's now mid-afternoon, and Nahida has been fighting for breath since last night. Untreated, asthma sufferers can fall unconscious. Put it by your face, and we'll fasten it on properly in the tip, okay? Air passages into the lungs constrict and go into spasm, and it can lead to respiratory failure. One person dies every seven hours. Nahida needs help fast. Do you normally find that the, the nebulizers work? Yeah. Just relax. Just relax. That's good. The nebulizer and mask Just means a quick breath. acting drug will vaporize oxygen directly into her lungs. Uh, she, he's given her a salbutamol nebulizer. Basically, it's the same drug as the Ventolin in, in an inhalers but a more concentrated form and it just gets into this blood system a lot faster. It should open up her airways for us and means she gets uh, a lot less short of breath. The drug has to get have time to work. Just have a listen to your chest, Nida, OK? You may have to sit forward for me just a little bit. That's a girl. OK, lovely. You're doing stuff. She's got um, wheezing in both lungs, but it's more pronounced on the left-hand side. So the left lung's a little tighter than the right one. <laughs> Nahida is on dialysis for kidney failure. Barry checks her heart rate. 
just going a little bit too fast at the moment, but that could be because of the fact you were short of breath and the fact that they're giving you the drugs as well. All right, it should calm down in a few minutes. We've got a bigger ambulance coming as well, so it might be policy to pop you down to the local hospital. All right, it's been as it's been so long since you've been short of breath. It's a bit tight, OK. Have you been bringing anything up when you're coughing? What colour is it? White. White. She may have a chest infection starting. She says she's got a productive cough. So yeah, it's white. Uh, white um, stuff she's bringing up at the moment. So if that was to turn yellow or green, then it would confirm the fact of a chest infection. As deep a breath as you can, my darling, OK? Her wheezing is starting to ease and her oxygen levels are picking up. We're looking for as close to 100% as we can. And it's, it's hovering between 99 and 100 now. So her oxygen levels are actually as good as they're going to get. As the ambulance arrives, Barry checks her lungs again. You can hear the phlegm. When she coughed, it moved it. Um, and the wheeze became a bit less, so it's, it's starting to move the stuff up through her tubes in her lungs. More than five million people, five times the whole population of Birmingham, suffer from asthma. Does that feel better? Yeah. With a patient admitted to hospital every eight minutes, it's a condition that shouldn't be underestimated. If an asthmatic is having a, a, a quite a severe asthma attack, obviously they treat the cells with their own medication. If that isn't resolved, within 10 to 15 minutes, then they should obviously call for us. Uh, we can come out and we can treat them with ours. Um, sometimes it relieves the symptoms on scene and they're happy enough to stay where they are. Other times they still have to go into hospital. After the break, a woman's collapsed in a department store. What do you think of the bed anyway? Is it? Yes. <laughs> and a schoolboy hurts his shoulder. In this position it kind of hurts better. Yep. Birmingham, and for once Mark Hayes can leave his bike behind as he's called to a department store across the road. A woman's collapsed shopping for an outfit for her grandson's wedding. Mark finds her lying in the bedding department and she's in agony with a kidney problem. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst pain you've ever had, what score would you give the pain? 9, nearly 10. And what have you taken for, for the pain? I'm taking it because it doesn't cure it. It doesn't cure it. So they've not tried you on any pain relief at all? One, two, three. Mark starts by doing some basic observation, including a blood glucose test. Hold that on there. I, would, I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't genuine. No, I'm, I'm, I, I don't date you for one minute, my love. I wouldn't be doing this. No, I don't date you for one minute. Than Shouldn't have come out, you should have stayed at home. That, that's all I've done. I know it's hard for you, being cooped up at home, unwell. But hopefully this there'll be a fix soon. I've got to get What do you need an outfit for then? Miss grandson's wedding next yeah. Next month. I'm sure you'll get sorted. The observations are clear, but Marlene will be taken to hospital for more detailed checks. Right. It's a busy day for the ambulance service, but at least Marlene's in the perfect place to wait. You, your feet are dangling down. They would be better if they were up level, but I don't really want to move you about. No, I, know, I, know. So. I mean, I don't want to take advantage of too much of the place. No, they won't mind, don't worry. No, don't worry about your feet. Huh? I've been into shops like this before now, and the homeless have come in and got into the beds and fallen asleep. Oh, sounds good to me. What do you think of the bed, anyway? Lovely. Is it? <laughs> Can't sell you one while we're here. Yeah, it's off for sale. How oh, is it not? Oh. <laughs> Tried to get you a bargain then. After a few more minutes, the ambulance crew right. arrives. We have a crew for you now. <laughs> darling, what we're going to do is, it's all right, my darling, it's what we're here for. What we're going to do is nice and slowly try sitting you up, all right? What I need you to do is focus in front and take some nice, slow, deep breaths, all right? Apparently she used to have... Um, quite severe edema, which uh, she's been put on. Um, God, we're, we're off. Thank you, little girl. Thank you. Okay. 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 Where's my shoes? Oh, They're in the bag, don't worry, they've got them. Marlene, I hope you get better soon. And good oh, luck for the wedding. Oh, my God. All right, and these I'm look after you. I like this. Oh, they'll get you sorted. 
Yeah. All right then. So All the you. best, then, my darling. Take care. All right. Just going to talk you All back. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'll be, I'll be back to see you. Yes. I'll be back to see you. All right. With Marlene safely on her way, Mark could do with the lie down himself. Display lights and biker leathers don't mix. Oh, it's warm in here, isn't it? Too warm. Chamberlain Square, the heart of the city. A Wrexham schoolboy here for a choral competition has just taken a fall. Two zero one received on route. Steve Harris sprints right into the pedestrian area to help the lad who's taken refuge in the central library. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello there. Thanks for coming. All right. What's your name? Owen. Hello, Owen. I'm Steve. What's happened? You just. I fell over on my head. Okay. Right. No pains down here. No. No pain in your elbow. No. This is Owen. He's uh, had a fall outside. Uh, as he's gone down, he's put his arm out to save him. Uh, I'm querying at the moment whether he's dislocated his shoulder. So uh, that's what we're treating him for. He will be going to hospital. Where your elbow is, at the moment it's sticking out in front of you, okay? And what we're going to do, we're just going to rotate it around so that it's as I fell. Let's just make this a comfort. In this position, it kind of hurts better. Yep. But now that it's resting in that, is that a bit easier? So what you need to do at the moment, it's still not on your tummy. So we just need to, just nice and relaxed. And then it'll slowly fall down until it's resting across your tummy. All right. You been in hospital before? Before? Another fall? Broken collarbone. Collarbone. Same side? Or was it this side? Left. Right. And what, was that from a fall as well? Um, yeah. Yeah. How long ago? Um, six years ago. Oh, right. Well, how old are you now? Ten. Got you. Well, that ain't bad, is it? Twice in ten years. Yeah. Any injury to the shoulder joint or that area uh, in time can uh, reoccur, if you like. It can be a slightly weak joint. He's been very brave. He's been good as gold, hasn't he, mate? Hey. Owen will have to go for further checks, but he and his mum have to get a school coach home, and there's only an hour to go. I think he was being very brave. Uh, he was quiet. He was obviously in some pain there, uh, but he wasn't letting it show, and he, he certainly uh, gave us no problems at all. He's a nice lad. And it's not something Steve hasn't seen before. I've got two kids. Uh, they are a lot older now, uh, but I, did ha I have got a boy and he was always uh, having accidents. He was, he was one of these lads that was falling out of trees, trips, falls, wearing, breaking the odd bone, wearing plaster. So it was constant. Hairdresser Paul had broken his leg and was on crutches for weeks. The man who fell from the drain pipe escaped with a broken wrist and a fractured ankle. Nahida has been very poorly in hospital but is back at home and making a good recovery. Marlene is determined to be well enough to make her grandson's wedding. Fortunately for young Owen, the school bus home was delayed and he managed to get aboard. He is now right as rain.